Hi, Michelle Glass here. Welcome back to our conversation about the cardiovascular system. We have moved from lecture 20 into our lecture 21 or chapter 21 for our information. Our topic here is the regulation of blood flow. When we talk about good blood flow, we're talking about tissue perfusion. This is really referring to, you know, is that blood adequately getting to your tissues, delivering oxygen, nutrients, and um, effectively performing waste removal. Now there are three things that are affecting your tissue perfusion. So obviously cardiac output would be one. Cardiac output is of course talking about how much blood you are sending out um, with each of those heart beats. Well, um, you know, in a minute, right? Because cardiac output is looking at the heart rate times the stroke volume. Peripheral resistance, we've already talked about this. This also was discussed for us in our chapter 21. This is looking at, you know, how easy or hard is it to get that blood moving through the arterial system. If you have a high resistance, then that means it's really hard to get that blood pumping to all of your um, body parts. And then the other factor that we're looking at here with this would be blood pressure. So obviously if you have a low blood pressure, it's going to be harder to get that blood moving through the whole systemic circuit versus a high blood pressure, which is moving um, the material through, but might be creating some other problems. We need to obviously then regulate all of these factors in order to keep our blood moving through the systemic circuit properly. So let's take a look at how we do that. There's actually three different ways to regulate um, those characteristics. Um, so regulating overall tissue perfusion. One is autoregulation. So autoregulation means outside of the central nervous system. So we're not using the central nervous system. We're not using hormones in the case of autoregulation. It's a localized. So this would be like paracrine communication local hormones, um, so it's very specific to that particular area. So we can adjust blood flow through capillary beds. If you look in your text, you have a nice diagram showing you the anatomy of a capillary bed, and you have these little capillary sphincters that can actually close off um, blood flow to a capillary or dilate to increase blood flow to a capillary. So you can have a lot of control right there at each of your capillary beds. In the case of the autoregulation, we're making these immediate little localized adjustments to that capillary bed to make sure we're getting adequate blood flow to that area. If that fails, then we need our central regulation. Central regulation means, okay, now we're recruiting the nervous system and we're recruiting the endocrine system. So once our autoregulation uh, turns out to not be enough, then we're going to need to recreate these other two um, mechanisms to bring uh, body back under control type thing. Central regulation mechanisms are going to be focusing in on factors to affect cardiac output and also blood pressure. So we'll be looking at that. In terms of our central regulation, of course, this is involving our nervous system. The nervous system um, is triggered by arterial pressure. So we have special types of cells called baroceptors that are gonna be important in detecting differences in blood pressure. And then we have also what are called chemoreceptors, which are detecting differences in our gas levels. So obviously if we have not enough oxygen or too much carbon dioxide gas, then we're not getting adequate movement of our blood through the body. Your endocrine system will also be involved in order to regulate cardiac output and blood pressure. Um, of course, the endocrine system is going to have kind of uh, a short-term and a long-term effect. So the short-term is just to enhance what's happening with the nervous system. So it's just kind of carrying on that mission and then also making it a little bit longer lasting. So of course, this would be the significance of involving both the neural and the endocrine systems as we look at this regulation of cardiac output and blood pressure. Okay, that's it for now. We're going to be staying tuned. I jumped ahead, right? I have this, this last slide here, so um, I got excited. <laughs> Auto regulation. Alrighty, so 
Um, if we want more blood flow to an area, we're going to dilate the blood vessels. So we're going to use what are called vasodilators to dilate, open up the blood vessel and get more blood flow to an area. So these are, this is a list of vasodilators, things that will increase your blood flow. So if you have too little oxygen or too high CO2, the chemical lactate, nitrix, um, nitrous oxide, NO, we've talked about it before as being a hormone that can be released by endothelial cells. If you have high potassium concentration or high um, hydrogen ion concentration in ECF, high potassium tells us that we have damage to our cells because potassium should be located inside of the cell. And so that might be a reason to increase blood flow. Histamine uh, release, that's triggering inflammation. And so we cause inflammation by dilating blood vessels. If you have an increase in a local um, localized temperature, this will be another signature um, vasodilator. So this is gonna increase blood flow to that area, which makes sense because that might indicate that there's an infection or problem. We need white blood cells come into that area. If, if we have damage, we may need some platelets come into that area. We may need some other factors to assist with um, repair. Um, so all that would make sense. Taking a look on the opposite side, um, would be vasoconstrictors. So these are going to be things that are going to tighten up that blood vessel, reduce blood flow. So this can occur um, with the release of prostaglandins, which are, we've talked about them as local hormones before, as well as uh, thromboxins. Um, these can be released by platelets, by white blood cells, and by damaged endothelial cells. So here, remember, we've talked about one of the immediate responses to hemostasis is a vessel spasm. So these are all going to help to constrict that blood vessel, reducing blood flow to that area. So you're reducing blood loss because these are indicators that damage has probably occurred. All right. That is it for now.